Okay, my friends, we say welcome back as we make a nice orderly transition right now. We go from that twilight zone to the Joe Franklin memory lane zone accent right now today on beautiful memories. Something today I don't think we've done in 20 or 30 or 40 or, or a thousand years. A one hour tribute to a gentleman, a beautiful man, a man who did it all. I mean, dramatic actor, comedian, brilliant, fine, did it all with ease, believable, from the word one to the last word. His name was Jack Guilford. Here's a photograph of Jack Guilford at the beginning of his career. We'll be chatting today with his uh, beloved uh, wife, Madeline Guilford, his son, Sam Guilford. Madeline herself, a fine actress, and uh, Sam is... Uh, an old pal of mine, an old fan of this uh, TV show. He is an archivist, and from the archives and from the private and personal files and vaults of the Guilford uh, people, some film clips, some videos, some uh, TV commercials that haven't been seen anywhere in many a year. It's going to be a tribute to Jack Guilford, the late and great. Following these words, let's watch closely. Be right back. <laughs> Well, the gentleman that will be honoring, and I mean gentleman, gentleman, he was a gentleman, the gentleman that we're honoring today, ladies and gentlemen, here he was uh, not that many years ago, Mr. Jack Guilford with Buster Keaton and with Zero Mostel. This had to be a funny thing happened on the way to the forum, but the man that we're honoring today was a brilliant talent and uh, a nice man, and uh, he was loved. Uh, by his family, and he loved his family, and I've asked his family today, or part of the uh, Jack Guilford family, Madeline Lee Guilford, who was herself a fine actress and a Broadway and TV producer, and Sam Guilford, who's a noted archivist, to sit with me and reminisce, maybe talk about Jack Guilford at home, his private life, away from the camera, away from the movie screen, away from radio and TV and nightclubs. But, 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 but Sam, I know that uh, among your archives, in your vault, are some old Joe Franklin TV shows because your daddy many times told me that you're a fan of this kind of a show. And in case Joe were not here today, how might, how might you pinch hit for me at a time like this? Ladies and gentlemen, the show just began. We're going to have a very special celluloid nightcap, which means I'll be with you wandering through movie memory lane with Jack Guilford. Here's his first clip in 1935, uh, Midnight Melodies, where he did some of his impersonations of early radio. Uh, uh, stars, and uh, we'll get rolling with Midnight Melodies. Stay with us. Don't be depressed. Stay right there. If you leave us, we'll feel very insecure. Jack <laughs> Guilford in 1935. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Ted Pearson bringing you another of our celebrity nights. Tonight we are honored in having among our guests some of the foremost stars of stage, screen, and radio. First, I want you to meet one of the outstanding radio personalities, Rudy Valley. <laughs> Your favorite screen comedians is here tonight, and I'm going to ask him to do a bit from one of his pictures. Mr. Henry Armetta. Ladies and gentlemen, I just came back from Italy. It was beautiful. I was walking down the gang of plank. Someone yells, the man overboard. I look around, I'm a large America. It was me. <laughs> Ladies and 
Ladies and gentlemen, two more famous comedians have just arrived at the club, and I want you to meet them. First, that funny man of the film, Mr. Harry Langdon. <laughs> pleasure of introducing that popular singing comedian of stage, screen, and radio, Mr. George Jessel. What a bright and a guiding light that taught me wrong from a bright I found in my mother's eyes. Ladies and gentlemen, Wherever I am, I always speak to my mother on the telephone. Hello, Mama. This is Georgie. How are you feeling? Oh, you see spots in front of your eyes? Why don't you wear the glasses that the doctor prescribed? Oh, you are wearing them. Well, how do you feel now? Oh, you see the spots much better. <laughs> Goodbye, Mama. I Mama, this is Georgie from The Money Every Week, right? <laughs> Georgie <laughs> Jessel, Jack Guilford as Rudy Valley, as Harry Langdon, as Georgie Jessel, as Henry Armetta. Now, many people, Madeline Lee Guilford, uh, might like to know uh, what they call behind the scenes, how long you were married and... Uh, oh, 42 years. 42 years. Right. Uh, and I didn't know Jack in 35. No. It was a little age difference. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and, uh, but that was his first film. And did he, he started did he, as a mimic. Did he have one favorite film or one favorite part or role or episode? I mean, out of the hundreds or thousands of assignments, the, uh, the uh, engagement is through the years. Was there one part, one role, one, anything that, that gave Jack Guilford well, the most personal uh, delight? Strangely enough, because he was always known as sort of quiet, and right. he pioneered by doing quiet stand-up work right. when he first began, and he had to break through, you know, long before... Uh, uh, Woody Allen and before people who just talked to the audience uh, so that whenever he got a loud mm -hmm. burlesque part he liked those the best like the uh, frosh at the, in the flayed mouse at the Metropolitan how Opera. Would, how would Joe Franklin describe those kind of parts? He would say the word is television. Vision, the accent being on vision under the affluence of alcohol. Got to give him this vision. This man knows his onions. Talk shows would never last on TV. That's what, that's what somebody once said, right? You got to give him Seltzer bottles, pratfalls, burlesques, right, Sam? <laughs> Absolutely. You know, he coined the phrase, I don't know if you know this, Joe, but he coined the phrase, the butler did it. Really? In an old routine he used to do back in the late 30s, a, a spoof on, one of the first people to do a spoof on, on movie sat, you know, uh, stereotypes and satire on movies. He was an original. He was, very, he was a successful man professionally and privately, I mean, at home and on the stage. No matter where he was, Jack Guilford succeeded, right? That's well, the things that he used to do for us privately right. uh, became public. And one of the things he developed, uh, and uh, Sam will tell you about it. Tell him about the animals, Sam, because I think the that's animals. The clip. Yeah, well, my father did a special. You know, finally back in uh, 1981, I think it was, for CBS. It was, as you would say, put on the shelf, put in the can. But uh, it was it not showed, seen. Yeah, we're showing well, a couple seen, times. But CBS cable went out of business. Oh, that's what happened. After right. a year. Continue. But uh, he did uh, wonderful imitations of, of animals. A lot of people didn't, and I'm not sure if a lot of people can identify with some of those radio stories that he did because, as you know, we're just memory laning here. Right. Sentimentalia, memorabilia. We're we're young dinosaurs. We're going to do this now for the uh, brand new generation of future dinosaurs right now. And uh, it's known as Jack Guilford and his animal stars. Very special. And any, Jack any certain special. any certain non-animal stars that he preferred uh, <laughs> co-starring with. If, if, if Jack Guilford were here today, sadly he's not, but he's watching someplace upstairs. Uh, did he have any certain co-stars or co-players that he mostly enjoyed appearing with? Well, Jack Lemon. Jack Lemon. Carol Burnett. Right. Dean Martin. I saw you with Jack, you with your husband in Save That Tiger. Yes. Save yes. the Tiger. That yes. was a movie. Right? Yes. He's very see... close with Zero Mostel, Sam Mostel. Right. A mm -hmm. painter. Right. Mm -hmm. Would you like to see the animals? A little bit by mm -hmm. friends from the just private files. Oh, introduce We drop the needle just anywhere. Right. Just a touch of a very special 
entertainer. Coast to coast. And if the wind is strong, we go to Brooklyn, right? <laughs> Here it is. I will now audition and act like an animal. First, a chicken. An elephant. <laughs> A Russian wolfhound. And an, an owl. A camel. I know a uh, comedian's family. They tell me that when this certain comedian comes home at night, he's quiet and cranky. Uh, they always say they always say the only people that he makes laugh are the other people, but never his own family. How about how about Jack Gilfrey when he came home at night? Was was he communicative? Was was he energetic? A little bit on on Jack at home after a day on the set. Sweet, but uh, as they say, was he funny at home? No. <laughs> comedy, comedy is, is a serious business. Serious business. Uh, uh, we always relax with Joe Franklin late at night. <laughs> That's right. But he, was, but he was upbeat. Oh, yes, yes, he was. Uh, but uh, serious, you know, the, like Burt Law and uh, even Zero. They, uh, uh, it, clowning was for the public, and it, uh, 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 y y you, he was a very good father and very serious. He Just as an example, I remember when my father was into doing watercolors for a period. What, you, those were in the late 40s? or Right. It was very good. Painting. And he signed one once as a joke, Vincent Van Gilford. <laughs> and Sam Mustel, the painter, Zero Mustel, got very upset with the, the fact that he, uh, that he had done that. I remember that. I am chatting, my friends, as we do a tribute to the late and beloved uh, Jack Gilford, who passed away when? Uh, June 4th. 1990. 90, which is... Uh, very Just short a while ago, ago. and uh, born in 1908. 1908 passed Williamsburg, away. Williamsburg at the age. Side. Lower East Side at the age. He would of have been 82. Would have been July 25th. Now you said the word upset. I got to tell you how I first met Jack Guilford. You, you never, you never knew this. He was upset. He was watching my show one night, and he, I, I, I thanked a lady guest. I thanked a woman, and I didn't get up. I thanked her. She walked away, and I forgot to get up. He called me up very, you know, you, have, you never heard this, story, right? He called up very upset. He said, Joe, when, you, when the lady walks away, you got to get up. You can't just sit there. He was very polite. He was very polite. He was very upset. Then we finally got together. He came on my show after that many times. And, and you mentioned Bert Lahr. There were several people who used to scare me all the time. I never wanted to invite George them on. George S. Kaufman. George S. Kaufman. How'd you know? Bert Lahr, <laughs> uh, Fred Allen, Groucho Marx, and Jack Guilford. And, 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 but, but, I remember what he said about George F. Kaufman. He said... I, I never met George S. Kaufman. He frightens me. Right. <laughs> but in every case, in every case, the people I met, uh, the people that I mentioned just now, I found out only after they were gone that they wanted to be invited onto this program. Isn't that sad? Yes. Well, we're George, the lucky ones. George so we S. appreciate Kaufman, so much. Jack was directed by George Kaufman I know. in Romanoff and Juliet with uh, Peter Ustinov. On Broadway Let me for thank you, Joe, for having us on. I really yeah. appreciate it. We didn't start it. yet. Ladies and gentlemen, we're honoring the... <laughs> just uh, getting going. Say it, say it. We're just getting going, ladies and gentlemen, which means stay with us, don't go away, be back right after this. This is the synopsis of the synopsis and the big party. <laughs> well, the in-between party is about to begin. Stay here. <laughs> With you strolling through a little bit of photograph <laughs> memory lane, there's Jack Guilford doing his uh, nightclub routine as a kid. And uh, here we see Jack Guilford in one of his movies with Jack Lemmon, Save the Tiger. 
And Mr. Uh, Sam Guilford, what's happening here as we take a peek, I believe, into the uh, world of my opera? My father had one of the, uh, the non-singing roles for 15 years with the Metropolitan Opera as uh, Frosch, the drunken jailer in uh, Deflator Mouse. Mm. And that was way back then. And in Save the Tiger, he was nominated for an Academy.